With GitHub offering both composite actions and reusable workflows, I've seen a lot of people having doubts about what they should use. And in fact, I often receive questions like this one. What is the difference between composite actions and reusable workflows? In the past, the difference was very clear because composite actions only allowed you to use bash scripts in them. But now, as I explain in this video, with uh, composite actions allowing you to use other actions inside them, the difference is much more subtle. In general, I would say that about 80% of the time, you should be able to use either one. But in the remaining 20% of the time instead, you have to choose between one or the other. So let's see what the differences are in this three minute series video. Hey, welcome back to Code Day, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. And welcome to a new episode of the three minute series, short videos, big value, hopefully. As you can probably see behind me, today I'm not in my studio. I'm in a quarantine hotel here in Hong Kong. If you want to know more about this and why I'm here, check out my vlog channel. All right, composite actions versus reusable workflows. First of all, let me say that if you want to have a deep dive in either of those two topics, uh, check out the other videos I made specifically about them. You can find a link in the video description. But in general, uh, if I have to summarize, I would say that the composite actions are made to be more generic and kind of isolated, while the reusable workflows instead are more specialized, more feature rich, and apply in more specific scenarios. And with that in mind, I've identified six main differences in these two flavors of GitHub Actions, and we will go through one by one now. First difference is about nesting. With composite action, you can nest down to 10 levels. And what that means is that you can have a composite action that inside calls another composite action and so on and so forth down to the 10th level. Reusable workflows, on the other hand, cannot call other reusable workflows. They cannot be chained. Using a different language, perhaps more familiar to users of other CI platforms, you cannot have templates referring to other templates. Second big difference is about secrets. Composite actions cannot use secrets, not from the workflow directly, nor as parameters. And this, as you can imagine, can be a big limitation. Reusable workflows instead can consume secrets, although you have to pass them to the workflow via the parameters, um, as you can see on screen. And this, together with the next difference, make reusable workflow way more flexible. All right, so the third difference is that reusable workflows can use if conditionals. And this means that the execution of parts of the template can be controlled by some conditions, uh, like you would do in a normal workflow. This unfortunately is not present in the composite action, where in fact you only have a flat list of steps that you can execute, and so you have no control over their execution. We are now halfway, but before we move to the next three main differences I found, Hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This not only will let more people be benefit from it, but also will mean a lot to me. So the fourth main difference I'd identify between composite action and reusable workflows is where you can store and how you can store them. Reusable workflows can be stored in your repo as normal YAML action files in the .github slash workflows folder, or you can create a centralized repository to store multiple reusable workflows. On the other hand, each composite action definition requires its own repository, which must be public, and a metadata file. And of course, if you want to execute some more complex scripts as part of the composite actions, then you need to put that in a separate file and you need to store the file together with the metadata as well. Fifth difference is about multiple jobs. As we've seen before, um, in composite actions, you only have a flat list of steps to execute, so because of that, you cannot have multiple jobs. And in fact, a composite action doesn't even specify a job keyword. It has the runs keyword instead and can only be consumed from within a job in the color repository. You can basically see a composite action like any other action you can find in the marketplace. But the story, of course, is different for reusable workflows. They do define jobs inside them. And because of that, you can have as many jobs as you want in a single reusable workflow. And since they do use job, as you know, you need to specify for a job where that will run, unless you do it at the workflow level. So we can take this a step further and state that if you need your job or some step in your job to run on a specific agent or machine, 
then you need to use reusable workflows over the composite actions because as we've seen in the composite actions you cannot specify the job therefore you cannot specify or you cannot restrict that to a specific um, agent or machine. Sixth and last difference I've identified between reusable workflows and composite action is something that in my opinion is fairly important but I often seen overlook. I'm talking about logging. With reusable workflows you have a very rich log of what is happening and every single job in it and step is logged independently in real time. Using composite actions instead all you have is a single log of a single step even if that in reality contains multiple steps so the log is not as clear. Because of all we've seen I think it's clear that reusable workflows are more feature rich and you can kind of compare them to a template concept that you can find in other CI definitions like Jenkins or Azure DevOps and so on and so forth. And of course they require some more YAML and some more control uh, but they are more flexible. For composite actions instead it's really useful when you need to pack or you want to pack multiple steps and operations in a single step to be run in a workflow in which perhaps you don't need too much logging or you don't want to have too many operations crammed in just one. You can really compare them to the other actions in the marketplace with the difference that that will contain uh, multiple steps as we've seen. Hope this clarifies once and for all the main differences between these two very powerful features of GitHub Actions. But do let me know in the comment section below if you have any other question that this video didn't answer. Also, check out this video over here in which I explain how to build and use reusable workflows. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Day.